Good day, LA. I'm Zach Goldsmith. This is Ben Bellick. Thank you for joining us for another episode of To Live and Buy in Los Angeles. Today, we have an icon in the world of residential real estate. He's the founder and CEO of the agency. He sold the Playboy Mansion and everything else in between. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to welcome to the show our friend, our brother, and our boss, yeah. the Hi. iconic Mauricio Umansky. Well, what an introduction, uh, 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 man. I love it. Uh, what a pleasure to be here with you two. Thank you. All right, let's dive right in. Mo, why did you agree to do Dancing with the Stars? Ha. Um, that's a great question. I mean, you know, the truth is I was on a yacht with um, my family. Uh, we were vacationing. And, <laughs> Must uh, be nice. In, in, in Europe. And, as one and, does. As one does. We were in Italy. We were in the south of Italy. And uh, Kyle actually got the uh, email uh, asking her if she wanted to be on Dancing with the Stars. Um, and she's like, oh, I got asked for, you know, the, if I want to be on Dancing with the Stars. And she go, and I said, well, you should do it this time because she had been asked previously. And um, she said, no, it's not for me and what have you. And I said, well, if I were asked, I would do it 100%. <laughs> Um, and uh, so she rejected and two days later all of a sudden I got the email <laughs> and uh, so I got the email I kind of had no choice because I had already said that you know if I were asked I would do it 100% um, but it also came just you know it came it came at a good time for me I called up Rainey the president of our company of the agency um, and I said to her hey I got this email I got an opportunity to do Dancing with the Stars you know where are you at with the company can you handle it you know can you you know can I do I have the time to go do that and she said yes so she gave me the support which was awesome Awesome. Um, you know, it was a good time for me to, to go to, to just go do it from that perspective. And, you know, looking back in hindsight, you know, it, uh, with everything that I've been going through in my life, you know, at home and, you know, with Kyle and our separation and all of that stuff, um, you know, it's like God sent me uh, the ability to dance my way through, you know, through through a difficult time versus having to deal with it. So it was kind of really, really nice. Wow, that's I mean, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, you're going through a very public separation with arguably the world's most famous reality star, your wife of 27 years, the mother of your children. How do you navigate such intense public interest in your private life? Yeah, it's really hard. I mean, to be honest with you, it's a little bit too much and it's actually been very difficult. I mean, the amount of stories that are being written right now in the media and they're doing so much speculation and so much bullshit. There's so many lies and so many different stories being told out there that are just so wrong and so incorrect. And, you know, they take a photo and they just make, you know, gazillion assumptions. Or Kyle will do a, uh, an interview. She did an interview with Us Magazine. And then I saw like 10 different articles come up with their own assumptions about what she did, right? Um, or I'm walking, you know, on the, in the street, you know, with, with you know, a woman um, that doesn't mean I'm dating her, right? And all of a sudden, you know, the whole world, you know, is like talking about, you know, uh, all of these things. And it's, it's a, it's a catch 22 for me because it's one of those things where it's like, well, do I defend it? Do I go out there and I start talking about the truth or do I just let things happen? If I start defending it, more stories get told, um, more media, more bullshit, more speculation. So it's one of those things that you just kind of have to just allow to happen. Um, it sucks. It's really, really difficult. I'm not going to lie. Um, and it's just a, uh, it's a tough, you know, time for me on that on, on that regards and and the media just sucks man i mean the speculation is just out of control and 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 the amount of incorrect information that's being written i can't is imagine just out of control well we you and i talk a lot about how you know you can handle it kyle can handle it but you're always concerned for your kids well you know the good news is that with the kids right now it's uh it's uh they're, they're, you know we, we're talking so much and we're so open i don't think any of them are reading any of it um, so it's really more about just people, you know, talking to them about, you know, stuff. And I think there's so much speculation right now that I think that a lot of people aren't believing a lot of the stuff that they're, they're, they're reading anyway, just because it's so much out there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Kyle and I right now are going through this tough time and we're going through it very amicably, which is really nice. Um, I mean, we had, you know, great marriage, great success. We're friends first um, and that will never change. And, um, you know, I, you know, if we can be a, uh, role models in the way that you, you know, are a, uh, a married couple. And then we can also be role models in the way that you separate, um, and go through that part of your life. Um, you know, that can also happen. Like, yeah. You know, a lot of the media is talking about, you know, 
how can they still be friends? How can, you know, why aren't they just, you know, filing for divorce? Why isn't he, you know, why are they like, you know, not, well, you know what? Fuck off. Like, they don't need to, you know, like, you can go through things in an amicable fashion. That does exist. You don't have to fight. Um, and, um, and I think at the end of the day that that's, you know, super important. You don't have to fight. You can do things on your own. You can do things the way you want to do it. And hopefully we'll be good role models and, you know, in this separation. Do you, and they say like, there's no, um, such thing as bad publicity. Do you disagree with that now? Well, first of all, I don't know if it's bad publicity or good publicity or whatever. I mean, publicity is publicity, right? I don't think it's bad in terms of reputational bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, so from that perspective, I haven't had any of those issues. Um, it's just annoying. And it's mm -hmm. just a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, particularly when you're going through something that's so difficult and you're having to read stuff that is um, wrong and, and, and every single day and speculation. And it's just, it's just a lot. It's just hard to live your life like that. That's really the bottom and line. I don't think it has anything to do with, you know, whether it's good or bad publicity. It's mm -hmm. just a lot. It's just a hard way to live your life. So, like, you just came out of this, like, settlement that was like four years, this crazy case on Sweet yeah. Modern Malibu. Yeah. And um, like understanding that the attorney meetings and all that stuff is so annoying and overwhelming and stressful. And it was four years. It's not like, you know, it was a few months. How do you compartmentalize that daily pressure into being a catalyst of so much positivity in and outside this company? Yeah, I think that, you know, that's um, just something that has to do with mindset. Um, and, and you have to, you know, in order to be a, a leader, in order to be a CEO of a company, in order to be a leader of, of, of anything, you have to be able to take uh, and, and handle multiple things at one time. Like that's just one of the character traits that a leader has to have. Um, you have to be able to compartmentalize the good. You have to be able to compartmentalize the bad. Um, you have to be able to deal with it. You have to learn how to deal with it. Um, the pressures, the stress, all of those different type of things. And you just kind of learn it. It's a mindset. It's a meditating thing. Um, and you got to just put them into different pockets into your brain in order to, you know, to, uh, concentrate on on the good because at the end of the day you know i do have to concentrate you know on some of the shit and some of the bad and some and, and deal with it you can't just ignore it i mm -hmm. actually do have to deal with it i have to bring it from the back of my brain to the front of my brain so that i'm dealing with it at that moment but once i'm done dealing with that phone call or whatever i gotta be able to compartmentalize it back to a place where it just doesn't exist in my brain and i can start talking about innovation think uh um creation growth um, all of the stuff that's more fun, that is productive stuff. Um, because if you just get stuck thinking about the stuff that's holding you back, you never go forward and you always have. I mean, if you look at it the last four years while I was dealing with this lawsuit, um, we, you know, we grew probably from 20 offices mm -hmm. to 100 offices, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we continued to push forward. We continued to gain market share. We became a global company. Uh, we did a lot of different things. I made different investments in my life. So um, I, I moved forward you know, with a bunch of innovation a bunch of creativity if I would have just ended up staying you know stuck in a hole in a hole we would not have done anything and so you just have to be able to compartmentalize things so you have times though you are human right you have times where being sued for 40 million dollars over four years takes its toll you have times where you come home and you scream and you drop to your knees and you have you know you cry over spilled milk I imagine and you just get up a lot faster than others uh, well, there's no question about that I mean I am a human okay just check, check <laughs> I am definitely human I was going to uh, pinch can... but I didn't want to hurt my fingers <laughs> but wait did you learn this from someone or did you one day have something happen and you were like I don't like how I handle that and you just made the decision from henceforth I'm compartmentalizing I think it's a combination of both I think it's stuff that's happened to be in my past and experiences that I've changed and that I've uh, learned how to compartmentalize yeah. uh, amongst, you know, reading, amongst listening, mm -hmm. amongst, you know, uh, other leaders. You watch how they act and what they have to do. I mean, when you, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and you learn. You're so skinny right now. Are you on Ozempic, <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> I am not even close to being on Ozempic, my friend. Uh, By the way, can I, should I put so on a sweater? Skinny. Should I put on a sweater? I've been, f I've been subtly flexing <laughs> the entire time. The I'm like, shit, for. I should have wore a jacket. Oh my god! I'll gosh. tell you, it all started with, uh, with you know, with dancing, with, with, with dancing with the stars. Um, I mean, and and I was I was um, working out for five hours a day, seven days a week, dancing like never. I started to lose weight like crazy. Um, I was eating; I just couldn't keep it on. I couldn't keep on the weight. Um, and then I realized that I felt so good um, that I just decided to just keep that going. And now I watch what I eat. I'm continuing to uh, to work out. I'm working on mobility. Um, my body feels super young. It feels great right now. 
and um, I you just get this you know and, and I, I was thinking about my, my my New Year's resolutions right in terms of like what I want to do in my life and, and to me it's all about balance right and so it's not so much that um, it's so important to be super fit like yes I want to be fit I want to be healthy I want to have mobility I want to have all of those things but um, I want to have balance. I want to have fun. I want to drink. I want to eat, right? So it's like, yeah. it can't just be all like one thing, right? So one of the big things that I, you know, I want to have balance in my life. I want to have live-work balance. I want to have uh, life-work balance. When I, I climbed a 12,000-foot uh, mountain. Um, you know, I do it every year at the, at the uh, and that's kind of how I seal my New Year's resolutions. Um, I've been doing it now, I think, for six years or seven years in a row. And uh, I come up, I write my resolutions, and that's, you know, and, and then I, uh, on the climb, uh, I think about them, I talk about them, I go through the whole thing, and et cetera, et cetera. And then I get to the top, and then I'll do like a small little meditation, and I'll do a little uh, prayer, I'll talk about my resolutions. And then I always say that as I ski down this bowl, um, it's, it's, you know, I'm sealing them. Right. Um, and then I go into the new year and then that's how I remember them because I make such an effort to get up to this, you know, to the top of this mountain. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the way I do it. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so they call those incantations, I believe, when you're assigning affirmations with like a physical activity and you hear like a lot of motivational speakers talk about doing not just saying the affirmation, which is what you're doing with the resolution, you're affirming them, but you're sure. doing with physical activity. So like your heart rate's going, your body's aroused or in an aroused state. Um, so a lot of people feel this um, buyer's agent commission lawsuit is going to upend our industry. Do you agree? I don't think it's going to upend our industry, but I think it's going to cause a lot of chaos, a lot of changes. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of chapter 11s. There's going to be a lot of reorganization. There's going to be a lot of people that can't afford it. Um, there's going to be a lot of small independent brokerage firms that get, you know, looped into some of these law firms that can't, will not even be able to afford, you know, the defense. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I, um, you know, I think we really have to look at that. I think that some of the defense that um, it, it's just not being looked at properly. I think that the attorneys need to look at what the, how they're defending these cases because the reality is that, um, you know, at the end of the day, doesn't our contract say that all commissions are negotiable? It does. I mean, it says it on there, right? Wait, and well, in California, it also says on the front page what we're giving the cooperating broker, meaning the buyer's agent. So if the seller's not okay with it, they don't have to sign. Correct. It's also a lot to do with the National Association of Realtors, which has been under a lot of scrutiny recently. And there was a New York Times article mm -hmm. that came out recently where you were quoted saying that you wanted to take them on. I am ready. As if you, don't have, as if you don't have <laughs> enough on your plate. So I'm already doing it. I'm in the middle of it. We're talking about it. I'm actually... Uh, um, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are having that discussion now, and we're looking at you know the p p potential of starting a new association of realtors. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking By the at, way, same uh, acronym, New Association of Realtors. Well, <laughs> still an R. I, I actually have, I actually have <laughs> What's a, diff a different one. I actually have a different name for it, but I'm just not sure I can... Uh, well, I'll say it yet. Um, area. You know, you know what an area is? Do we know what an area is? <laughs> yeah, American Real Estate Association. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I like it. He pitched it yesterday. I pitched it yesterday. I'm always the last to know. <laughs> so you've got, you know, you've got area. Uh, you know, I have the idea that there should not be 652 MLSs around the country. There yeah, should be one, one, you know, national listing service. Um, you know, I, I believe that the Association of Realtors that, you know, advocates for us should be advocating for us, uh, for all of us, not only on a federal level, but on a local level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, I've just seen so many mistakes. I don't feel that our National Association of Realtors is advocating for us at all. Take, you know, we're in Los Angeles. Look at what's happened here. Like, did you see them, you know, uh, lobby against ULA? Did you see any advertisings against ULA? No, did ridiculous. you see anything against that? Like, they didn't even, you know, there wasn't even like a, uh, a mention uh, anywhere of, you know, hey, real estate agents, like go out, you know, here's some information to go, you know, to go talk to your voters so that, you know, this doesn't happen. Or here's what the potential of is that there's zero advocacy on that, mm -hmm. you know, zero on the um, on the um, wildlife ordinance, right? Um, on a federal level, there's been zero. So they're really not doing anything for us, right? So yeah. uh, it's very frustrating. We pay a lot of money to them. A lot. Um, a lot of money to them. I, um, the reason why we do it is because, you know, 
they control our inventory on our MLSs, and then they give it to all of you know all of these the third, third party parties, sites, yeah. yeah, you know, like Zillow's, mm -hmm. and then Zillow sells it back to me. I got a call this morning from Zillow saying, you know, do I want to have you know my advertise my, my my houses you know stand out on on Zillow? And I'm like, well, what's that going to cost? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, what do you mean do I want to have them stand out? Am I, am I going to get the leads? Right, and then the well, the, yeah. If you pay, you're gonna get the leads. I go, am I gonna get all the leads? No, you're not gonna get all the leads. I'm like, so which leads am I gonna get? The good ones or the bad ones? Right. <laughs> right? Like, it's the one, yeah, the ones where the leads f with a magnifying glass find your name and number buried at the bottom where it says listing agent. It's frustrating, right? And so like these things should not. It's our inventory. We work hard for it. I mean, you guys have busted your butts to go get you know inventory uh, to market it to advertise it to put it out there and you should get you know a, a client should know whether they're calling you they don't have to call you but if they want to call you they should have the ability to call you do you think nars days are numbered officially i think nars days are definitely numbered i actually think that tomorrow um my understanding is that on friday they are going in front of the judge uh, to find out what the bond's going to be, I think it's going to be a pretty high bond. Mm. You know, they just the, the president of NAR just just um, yeah, so, resigned. Yeah, um, because under threat of blackmail. Under threat of yeah. blackmail, like what's that? Like, yeah, it's this is the, we're supposed to be dorky realtors. The sector we're supposed to be like kind of you know. There's a few of us that are kind of cool. You're cool. Zach and I try uh, to be cool. Don't put yourself in this. Category, <laughs> and by the please. way, like what could that possible blackmail be? It's got to be something know, intense. And she's a so just all of a sudden, like boom, like I'm resigning today. Like I think we know what it's based off of. Some of that blackmail. What would? What's your yeah, speculation what? on that? A lot of sexual misconduct. <laughs> it's always the same. I idea. mean, that's the, well, that's where the or the first president. That's already had the issue, yeah, right. Well, and, and that was part of this whole thing, you know. And they they had they had the sexual uh, harassment and, and, and allegations. So uh, there's no question in my mind that NAR is Nate days are numbered right now. Mo, don't rush on this one. Think about it. What do you think your superpower is? Uh, um, I, 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 I don't know. I think that my superpower is the ability to, uh, to, to turn everything into a positive. Yeah, he's he's taken that from my last uh, forum speech because I did say that. Okay, he uh, your superpower came from Zach. Mo, every, <laughs> all of our guests have. Um, how about... What do you think? What's the best entrepreneurial advice you've ever received? Um, I don't know if it's the best I've ever received, but something that comes to mind right now is a. Um, I remember when I was starting the agency, and I went and I spoke with Alec Gores um, about it, and he said to me, "Hey, you know, you're starting a company. You know, hire the best people you can. Don't be afraid of paying them. Don't be cheap. Um, <laughs> hire strong. Um, hire great people. Surround yourself, you know, with around great people." that have different opinions don't look for the same person like look mm. for people that can actually like give you you know uh, opinions uh, you you're, you're going to make the decision at the end of the day um, but you need to be able to bring in you know different uh, perspectives. perspectives yeah that's crazy um, my jay shetty asked michael rubin that last week and that's his exact answer oh really yeah that's how he's built those multi billion dollar companies he's hired people for the jobs that will have the opinions to bring to the table, and then you, you as the president, make your you decision, make decision whether to hit the red button or not. You are a guy who wears more hats than anyone I've ever seen. Is there anything in that process you wish you could do better? Uh, that's a tough question. That's a really good question. Um, you know, I, I, I wish I could do everything better. Um, I mean, that's the reality. I feel like I can improve on absolutely everything every single day. Huh. Um, you know, there's, there's always room for improvement. There's always room to be more efficient. There's always room to make, you know, one more phone call. There's always room to uh, have communicated a little bit better with, you know, um, our coworkers. There's, uh, there's always room to have communicated a little bit better with my family, with my kids, with my wife, with... Uh, uh, all of it, right? So there's always room for improvement. I don't think I've done every, and anything perfect. Interesting. So on that line, when you uh, get off a big conference call or you get out of a listing appointment or you get out of a big, big business meeting, do you slap yourself afterwards and say, shit, I just remembered I should have said this or that? Or do you suck it up and say, like, I delivered the best I could. Next time I have another opportunity. That's a great question. I often, uh, look, when, when you're talking about moments like that, there are times where you deliver 100%. Right, but that's a very defined moment. Like I delivered an incredible listing presentation. It was a hundred percent. It was an A plus. Sure, 
but that doesn't mean that that's a whole. That's one tiny little thing. Okay, like that's not that important of a thing, right? Um, however, I can tell you that anytime I go to a listing presentation, or I have a conference call, or I have a meeting, or I have a a uh, um, uh, a negotiation, anything, the first thing I do when I hang up or I finish is always analyze how I could have done it better. Huh. There's never a time where I don't look at that. And, and then if you reverse that, what is the prep you put in? Because you go from one meeting to the mm-hmm. next. How are you prepared for each meeting? Yeah, we put a lot of prep for all these meetings. I mean, I thank God I have, you know, great people that are around me like Jane um, and um, and she you know gives me notes I read uh, I'm prepared you know when I go you know I'll give you an example when I go up on stage and you know at forum or when I'm going to go do you know a big motivational speech or something like that like not only do I prep with the the knowledge of the stuff that I want to deliver on but I'm also prepping from a mindset perspective right so I'm I'm going I'm meditating and I'm starting to do my affirmations of what how I want to deliver something who do I want to touch? How many people in the audience am I trying to touch? Am I trying to? What am I trying to deliver to that to, to those people? Um, and so all of that prep is not only in terms of like the actual uh, knowledge of the of the information that you're trying to deliver, but also it's prepping the mind yeah. to be able to, uh, to, to, to to deliver on. I, I do that too. I try and think to myself, you know, a few minutes beforehand, what do I want to get from this? What do I want to give? What's my objective here? And it kind of like sets your goal before each meeting. So it sounds like you guys are both saying you you set clear intentions. Even if you feel spread thin, that last moment, you set an intention, a focus. You have to. And by the way, funny enough, I know everybody says I'm super busy and, you know, spread thin. I was actually thinking, you know, my, to myself the last few days and five, six, seven days. I don't have enough to do. I don't have enough to do. <laughs> um, and I'm actually looking for it. And today in the car, I was in the car looking and I was for- like, I was like, what else can I do? Like, what's, you know, what's my next project? You have a type of charisma um, where you do a really good job naturally of making people kind of feel like they're the only person in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, h- how how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great, well structured question. <laughs> but we yeah, all want to know. It's, it's a great question. You know, quite honestly, it just has to do with caring. Um, there's just a part of me that actually cares, and I actually want to listen, and I actually want to pay attention to you. Like, there's a certain Sorry, point pal. where you just, you know, you need to put, you know, the phone away. Um, and actually pay attention at the moment, you know, at the task at hand and what's going on. I mean, right, like we all have these shiny things. We all got a gazillion things going on, you know, but we started this podcast, um, you know, and, you know, we were we were sitting here and uh, this young gentleman was, uh, uh, was you know, was wondering, you know, if I was ready to start, right? And uh, you guys are like, he's ready to start, right? He's just <laughs> doing something else, right? <laughs> right, right? But as soon as we started, we put the phone away. We forgot about what's on the phone. We forgot about everything that's going on and we're focused on the task at hand. Right. So what does that do? We're on a limited time here. We've got 35 minutes, 40 minutes in order mm-hmm. to accomplish our mission. And, and, and if we focus on it, we're going to accomplish it in 35 to 40 minutes. If, I, if you sit down at a dinner, if you sit down at a meeting, at a negotiation, and you actually give that person your attention and you're actually in it, you're going to be more efficient. You're going to be more effective. You're going to win. Okay. They're going to feel like they're the only person in the room. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you're going to come out with success. Is that a skill you've learned to hone or have you were you born doing that? You've always had an interest. I think it's an innate skill that I was kind of born with that I've Shit. learned to hone and make it better. <laughs> You're okay. also curious. And uh, Phil Jones, who's a great public speaker and author, he says that um, curiosity leads to certainty. 100%. And if you're, if, you know, if you're tethered to this soul-sucking s- cell phone when you're in a meeting, it's really hard to be present and picking up on the little nuances of stuff. Well, <laughs> why do you think people are moving away from Los Angeles, the ones that are? Um, well, I, you know, look, LA's, you know, we have bad politics right now. We've got, you know, the, the ULA, we've got, you know, extraordinarily high taxes. We've got a tremendous homeless problem. Um, we've got so many issues going on in LA. We just need to fix them. Um, but, you know, the, a lot of people that are moving away are actually coming back. Didn't Elon Musk just come back? Right. He's on his way. I have clients that came back. That was the next question. Why do you think people are still moving to Los Angeles? Yeah, I mean, we still have the best weather in the world. We still have the best state where you can do so many different things. It's just absolutely, you know, uh, uh, visually, it's it's beautiful. The most gorgeous state it's in the, the union. It's the most gorgeous state in the union. I mean, it, it just is. You know, we've got the water. We've got the mountains. We've got... Uh, 
Yeah, it's beautiful. It's we've got Hollywood. We've got excitement. You know, you want to be in the suburbs. You can. You you know you can, you can just do whatever you want here. It's it's awesome. And you're well. You're also guys very committed to bringing this sort. You're also a guy who's very committed to bringing the city back to its glory days. And we need to bring the member. city back to its uh, glory days. I mean, uh, I gotta tell you, I you know, I've uh, I'd love to run for mayor. Um, when I when I when I when I finish this one, I'll go for mayor and let's go fix let's go fix L.A. I see so that. So you're gonna fix NAR, fix and LA. then you're gonna fix L.A. <laughs> yeah, and make then maybe LA California. great again. Make I, L.A. great again. I have I have a question because you 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 are a high risk high reward player, right? Um, the higher you rise, the bigger losses. You mm-hmm. seem to get up from knockdowns so much quicker. How did you learn this skill? I think it's just optimism. It's um, and it's just you know, conv- it, it, it's wanting to live life to its fullest. It's wanting to be happy. Um, I get up and I wake up in the morning and I want to be happy. And the way I'm happy is by doing you know, fun things. And uh, you know, fun things for me are are. You know, innovating, changing, you know, being a leader, like helping, like disrupting, like that's fun stuff for me, right? Um, I'm not going to, you know, fun stuff for me is to go, you know, um, play golf all day long, right? But I'm not going to be Tiger Woods. Like I wasn't born to be Tiger Woods. So it doesn't do me any good to play golf all day long because I'm not going to accomplish Tiger Woods, you know, uh, accomplishments. So what can I do great? I can I can disrupt, I can be an entrepreneur, I can be a leader, I can be a CEO. Like these are the type of things that I can do great and I want to make a difference in the world. And you, I think you have you started with me because I I am heavily influenced by that attitude because I think you've convinced me that you can go out and do what you do and have fun doing it, enjoy it. And when I do that, I notice my clients do it too and everyone around me does. It's an, it's an it's infectious contagious. energy that you have and I think that's your superpower. I think you have this magnetic infectious energy that makes everyone happier and more productive around you. I love you, man. Thank wow, you. I feel like Zach was just taking us out. Zach, were you were you just wrapping us no, up? No, I got it 20 more be. questions. Okay. So no, let's no, go back no, to your no. childhood when you were 6. <laughs> no, no. I- <laughs> uh, but we'll end it right now. I think I think for me personally being around you is like riding through life on a great glass elevator through space and time. It's like a remarkable intergalactic joyride. I've never experienced anything like it. And I think that's the culture of your brand and your company. It, it's, such a, uh, it's such a gift that you have, and I appreciate you sharing it with us. Well, I appreciate you know finally being allowed to be on your, uh, your show and your podcast. <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, you guys have done a great job. I love it, and uh, I'm glad that I'm now a part of it and that we get to share that as well as uh, you know, sharing in, uh, in, in, in the company and the brokerage and, uh, and obviously sharing you know, in uh, being on television on Buying Beverly Hills, which has been <laughs> a lot of fun. It's been amazing. Mauricio, we're going to let you get out of here. We know you're a busy guy. Thank you so much for your time your mentorship, your friendship, your jokes, which oftentimes you laugh the hardest at. Um, guys, if you're looking for him and you can't find him, uh, his Instagram is Mumansky18. That's right, M U Mansky. M U Mansky18. Yeah, I like calling him Mumansky. Um, I'm at Ben Bellack, seated next to my best guy at Zach Goldsmith24. <laughs> this is to live and buy in Los Angeles. Well, I just want to thank you for joining <laughs> from near had. and from all around the world. I got it in. Uh, we're excited for Mo. Thank you for joining us to live and buy in Los Angeles, where we bring you leaders and thought provokers dedicated to bringing back the glory of one of the greatest cities on earth. Super bien. Latest fam. See ya. Bye-bye.